In this video we are going to discuss about the major and advanced procedure in cardiology. The procedure is transcatheter aortic valve replacement. It is a marginally invasive procedure of surgery for replacing the inefficient and improperly functioning aortic valve with a brand new artificial valve. And also, the transcatheter aortic valve replacement is the replacement of the aortic valve of the heart through the blood vessels as opposed to valve replacement by open heart surgery. Then we are going to discuss the indications and contraindications of the procedure. Then how the procedure is performed in the cath lab and complications of the transcatheter aortic valve replacement procedure throughout the video. The indications for TAVI are, indications for aortic valve replacement surgical or transcatheter are as follows, the one with severe high gradient aortic stenosis with symptoms and asymptomatic patients with severe aortic stenosis and LVEF less than 50%. Then, severe aortic stenosis when undergoing for other cardiac surgery, and asymptomatic severe aortic stenosis and low surgical risk. Then, symptomatic with low florin, low gradient severe aortic stenosis, and moderate aortic stenosis in undergoing for other cardiac surgery. TAVR is approved for the following, low to prohibitive surgical risk patients with severe aortic stenosis, valve in valve procedures for failed prior bioprosthetic valves. Contraindications for the TAVI are, life expectancy less than 12 months owing to a non-cardiac cause. Myocardial infarction within the last 30 days, congenital unicuspid, bicuspid or non-calcified valve. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, short distance between the annulus and coronary ostium, need for emergency surgery, left ventricular ejection fraction less than 20%, severe pulmonary hypertension with right ventricular dysfunction, echocardiographic evidence of intracardiac mass. End-stage renal disease, mixed aortic valve disease concomitant aortic regurgitation, or significant aortic disease. Procedure The procedure is divided into five sequential steps. The first one is access, valve crossing, balloon aortic valvuloplasty, valve implantation, and access closure. Anesthesia That can be local with sedation or general anesthesia, then placement of a temporary pacing wire in the right ventricle. The default approach is percutaneous transfemoral access with pre-closure using two suture-mediated closure devices. Then by using ultrasound-guided alternate access of the smaller sized or left femoral artery, if both are adequate, puncturing is performed using a micro-puncture needle and sheath and exchanged for a 6 French 10 cm introducing sheath. Fluoroscopy is utilized to identify an appropriate site for the right femoral arterial puncture and a small 1 cm skin incision is made. The artery is accessed using a micro-puncture needle and sheath, and J-tipped guide wire is placed in the arterial lumen, using the safety wire as a fluoroscopic guide. Intravenous and fractionated heparin is then administered to achieve an activated clotting time, act greater than 250 seconds. After that the J-tipped guide wire is then exchanged for a stiffer Amplat super stiff guide wire. Then, the valve delivery sheath, 18 French and for 23, 26, and 29 um and 20 French for 34 rum coravalve is passed over the stiff wire under fluoroscopy to ensure its seamless passage through the arterial lumen. And a 5 French marker pigtail catheter is passed through the 6 French 10 cm arterial sheath in alternate access site and placed in basal portion of the non-coronary cusp. A series of aortograms, often with rapid right ventricular pacing to allow adequate visualization using dilute contrast, is performed at an implant angle determined from the CTA to verify linear alignment of the three cusps, coplanar image projection. Then the 6 French, AL1 catheter is passed through the valve delivery sheath over AJ tipped guide wire, and exchanged, for a straight tip wire to cross the valve. Then the valve is typically crossed in the left anterior oblique, projection on fluoroscopy, as it allows for early recognition of inadvertent wire entry, into the left main coronary artery while attempting to cross the stenotic aortic valve. If crossing is not successful, the catheter is exchanged for an AR1 or 4 catheter. Once across, the straight tip wire is exchanged for a 300 cm J tipped wire. The L1 catheter is then removed and exchanged for a 6 French angle pigtail catheter. Then the both catheters are connected to manometry and peak left ventricular and aortic systolic and diastolic pressures measured. And a pre shaped stiff guide wire is then placed through the angle pigtail catheter into the left ventricle with the transition point of the guide wire held above the apex, and pointing away from the ventricular wall. Then the pre-implantation balloon aortic valvuloplasty is usually performed, with rapid right ventricular pacing, the balloon size based on the minor diameter of the aortic annulus. 
and the valve delivery system is loaded onto the guide wire with the flush ports pointing up. The system is advanced over the guide wire to the aortic annulus under fluoroscopic guidance. And the cop planar image projection is achieved to see the radiopaque marker as a straight line. And in the first one third of the bioprosthesis is deployed by very slow counterclockwise rotation of the actuator, in short increments in the direction of the marked arrows. The capsule response is one, one after approximately two turns of the deployment knob. In patients with aortic regurgitation, hypertension or large annually, control pacing 90 to 130 beats per minute is considered during deployment. If the operator is satisfied with the valve position at annular contact, valve is continually deployed until just before the point of no recapture. If the implanting team is satisfied with valve position and performance, tension in the system is released just before full deployment to reduce potential for valve movement by retracting the guide wire, slight forward pushing on the delivery system, and turning the deployment knob very slowly to detach the paddles one at a time. And in the prior to withdrawing the valve delivery system to the descending aorta, it is ensured that the catheter tip is coaxial with the inflow portion of the bioprosthesis. Then the system is removed over the stiff wire. Wire position is maintained in the left ventricular cavity, and an angled pigtail catheter is reintroduced into the left ventricle. After that the final angiogram is performed after pullback of the angled pigtail catheter for assessment of valve placement and paravalvular leak. The large sheath is then removed over J-tip guide wire, proglide deployed, and protamin administered. If satisfactory hemostasis is achieved, the guide wire is removed. And mainly a peripheral angiogram is always performed through the alternate access site, to ensure vessel integrity at the large sheath access site. Then the alternate access site closure is performed with proglide, or angio seal, vascular closure devices. Complications, the possible complications are for TAVI includes, the conduction disturbances, a need for a permanent pacemaker, stroke, paravalvular leak, vascular site complications, bleeding, annular rupture, left ventricular perforation, cardiac tamponade, a need for surgery, then acute myocardial infarction, acute kidney injury, infection, hypotension, and death.